In Matthew 18, 18, Jesus told his followers that whatever they bound on earth would be bound in heaven, and whatever they loosed on earth would be loosed in heaven. But what exactly did he mean when he said that? Does that mean that we as believers have the authority to bind and restrain Satan? Does it mean that if we agree on anything at all as believers that heaven will back us and make sure that it comes to completion? Well, not exactly. Hello friends, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. If you could please take a second to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. And it does help support the promotion of Christian content on YouTube. All right, so today we're going to talk about this passage of scripture and we really just want to look at what Jesus meant when he said that whatever we bind on earth would be bound in heaven, whatever we loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. So let's go to Matthew chapter 18 and let's start by reading the passage of scripture so we can get its context. We're going to start in verse 15. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Now, the first thing that I want to point out to you is if you're reading this in your Bible, you're probably going to have a header there at the beginning of the section. And so mine says dealing with sin in the church, because that is the subject matter of this passage of scripture. That is the heart of it. It is dealing with sin in the church. And we know that because the first, let's see, three or so verses, it's talking about how we handle church discipline. What do we do if a brother or sister is caught in sin and they are unrepentant in their sin? When they are being confronted with whatever their sinful behavior is, they refuse to turn away from it. They refuse to ask for forgiveness and repent. Okay, so we're talking about how uh, we as the church are to handle situations like that. And in verse 17, it says, if they refuse to listen even to the church, you treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Basically, you are to excommunicate them and treat them as though they are an unbeliever. Now, this is the context. The context is church discipline. So when it comes to church discipline, this is where we get to what Jesus said. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So when Jesus says those words, when he has that saying, what he is saying is that when the church body comes together and they are dealing with an issue of sin in the church, when they are dealing with a professing believer who is in unrepentant, continuous sin, and this person has been confronted correctly uh, through the means of church discipline, and they have still not turned back and repented, then when the church gets together to announce a decision, meaning we've come to the point now where we are going to disassociate from this person, and we are going to treat them as though they are a pagan or a tax collector, it is saying that the decision that is made by the church in that context will have heaven's approval. Heaven will approve with it. Now, that does not mean that we as the believers are really the ones making the decision and then heaven goes, okay, whatever you guys decide is what we'll go along with. Really what it's actually saying is that heaven, uh, we are just announcing the verdict of heaven. <laughs> if if someone is unrepentant and refuse to, refuses to turn away from their sin after they've been confronted, so many times graciously, then heaven would say that this person is not demonstrating the fruit of a believer. And so we as the church get together and we announce that judgment. And that is why uh, Jesus can say, whatever you're binding, loosing, aka the decisions decisions that you make when it comes to church discipline, have the agreement and the approval of heaven. This is why it's so important when you read your Bible, guys, to always Look at the context. So if somebody's trying to use a verse and they're talking about binding Satan, you're like, well, where is there mention of Satan at all in this passage? Well, there is none. That's because it's not 
about that. In fact, this is something that you will commonly see. You'll, uh, you'll hear somebody praying and they say, Satan, we bind you. Uh, we take authority over you and we, you know, we bind you as if they're restraining Satan. Well, I would like to point uh, your attention to the fact that, again, this passage is dealing with issues of sin in the church, not with Satan. Uh, but look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's prowling around like a roaring lion. It doesn't sound like somebody who is bound up, who is restrained. Now, we know that Jesus has defeated uh, Satan and that we will be victorious in the end, but uh, Satan is loose right now, right? He's prowling around and he is doing his work. We do not bind Satan. And as uh, Vody Bauckham likes to say regularly, a very uh, popular pastor who I love and highly recommend his content, he says, um, if people are binding Satan, can they stop loosing him? Can they, you know, like, can they stop letting him free? Why don't they just keep him bound forever? Well, because that's not what the verse means. In fact, in the book of Jude, uh, we have the issue arise about people who are speaking against evil principalities a.k.a. Satan. And look at what it says in Jude, verse 8. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for the slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. So even the archangel Michael, when disputing with Satan himself, did not speak against Satan. He didn't say, uh, I bind you, Satan, right? He appealed to the authority of God. He said, the Lord rebuke you. And so this is the model that we want to follow when we're dealing with Satan, who is a very real enemy. He's the accuser of the brethren. But we don't bind Satan. We don't speak directly to Satan. We appeal to God, God who is victorious and triumphant over Satan, and he is the one who deals with it. So having a correct understanding of the passage in Matthew 18 will help us because we will know how to correctly deal with not only issues of sin within the church, but we know that we don't bind and lose Satan, that when it comes to matters where Satan is involved, we pray. We seek after the Lord. We ask for him to move on our behalf. And so this is really important, and I hope this gives you a much better understanding of what Jesus meant in Matthew chapter 18. With that, I have bound the bad teaching that comes from that verse all too frequently. All right, friends, I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has been, if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. Again, it really helps me out and helps get the good Christian content out on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.